I'm going to spill on myself for surezies. Welcome to Corelli. Welcome to Volume <laughs> 3. I'm here to tell you the story of my favorite Christmas movie. Miracle on 34th Street. I really love it. So there we are. It's the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Santa Claus is drunk and he's trying to do the whip like jingle bell, jingle bells. And Kris Kringle, our hero, shows up and says, oh, no, 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 it's all in the wrist. You gotta, wait a minute, you're intoxicated. Well, it's cold, a man's gotta do something to keep warm. Enter Doris something, Walker. What are you doing out of costume? What a bad Santa you are. He's like, Madam, your Santa's intoxicated. Oh no, this can't happen. She's like, you're out, he's in, get out of town. New Santa's like, this isn't my usual gig, but I'll, I have some experience. I brought my own padding, let's do it. He's a hit. Yes, you can find all kinds of toys at Macy's. Meantime, Susan's hanging out with the neighbor, Fred Gailey, watching the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Oh, look, it's Jack and the Beanstalk floating by or whatever. She's like, not all people are giants. You don't believe in fairy tales? What about Santa Claus? No, I don't want to even hear about it. So it's the next day. Kris Kringle is sitting on his throne of children and doing the like <laughs> meet and greet laughing. <laughs> And Mr. Gailey takes little Susan over there. What are we doing here? My mom hired this guy. I know he's just some schlub off the street. <laughs> just happened to be fat and sober. So I don't, I don't see why I'm gonna sit on this man's lap. He's like, well, maybe once you do, you'll realize <laughs> magical it is. <laughs> You'll change your mind. Santa Claus is like, hello, little girl. What do you want for Christmas? Nothing, thank you. And he's like, pull on my beard and see what happens. And she does. And he's like, oh, oh, real whiskers. This kind of changes everything for me. Her mother sees this and she's like, ah. I don't teach her about Santa Claus. That's really sad. Like you're sad and that's sad for her, but you're really pretty. While mom and the neighbor, Mr. Gailey are like arguing about it. She watches Santa interact with this other little girl. So the mom's like, um, my little girl doesn't speak any English. He's like, uh, surprise, I speak Dutch. Well, they sing this cute Dutch song. Maybe mother's wrong about everything. Mr. Shellhammer, he is the head of the toy department, is like, oh my god, Santa, you're doing such a Look at all these kids. And this little kid is like, Santa, I'm sitting on your lap. I'm so excited. I would like this toy. It spins and it's a beep bop boop boop. And the mom is like, Santa, whoa, don't. Macy's ain't got any. Nobody's got any. He's like, I, I got you. And he tells the little boy, you're getting that toy. That's a Santa promise. <laughs> cool, thanks. Don't worry, I saw it at Gimbal's, the competitor. She tells Mr. Shellhammer, great job with Santa. He's sending me to Gimbal's. I'm going to go buy that toy. But for no reason at all, I'm going to come back here and be a regular Macy's customer, even though your prices seem to be higher than anywhere else. And Mr. Shellhammer's like, yes, Maddie. <laughs> what? So Mrs. Walker's getting really frustrated. Santa, come over here. Tell my daughter you're not really Santa Claus. And he's like, I can't. I don't want to lie to her. I'm the real Santa Claus. She's like, oh, no. I thank you for your time. You got to get out of here. That's not great for me. So at the end of that day, Mr. Shellhammer is like, we've got to... We're in this meeting with Mr. Macy. It's already, I'm already here, it's happening. So they sit down and Mr. Macy's going on and on. You got this Santa Claus to send our customers to other stores. And from now on, we'll be seen as the friendly store. And therefore we'll rack up all the profits from never before. And Doris is like, oh, well, I fired him. What are you thinking? Doris is like, I'll hire him back. Mr. Shellhammer goes, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get my wife a double martini. She usually has one, I'm gonna give her two. And we're gonna convince her to let Santa Claus stay with me at my house. To cover our bases, why don't we send him down to Mr. Sawyer's office and he could do a psych evaluation. It goes fine. Mr. Sawyer's like, he's a little weird, but I guess it's okay. He passed. So it's that night and she calls Mr. Shellhammer's house and she's like, hello. No, 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 darling, like this. And he turns the phone around. <laughs> How silly of me. Hello, 
And he's like, no, darling. And she finally gets it right. Hello. Who? Why, yes, we'd love to have Santa Claus come stay with us. I think it'd be simply charming. Mr. Gailey is talking to Chris Kringle, and he's like, why don't you come live with me? And Chris Kringle's like, fucking sweet. <laughs> She's like, ugh, my plans. Chris Kringle's in the locker room of Macy's, and he meets Alfred, a young janitor. And he's sweeping, and Alfred's like, I hate commercialism. I'm so tired of dust. I love playing Santa Claus myself, until Mr. To Sawyer told me that that was such a terrible thing. That sucks, and I hate that guy. And he rips off this random piece of paper, and Alfred's like, score! <laughs> He confronts Mr. Sawyer, who's like, hey, you can't come in here and yell at me. And he clocks him with his cane. But at that very moment, Mr. Shellhammer and Doris are walking in. So he's like, I know it's just a little bump and um, I'm fine, but I'm going to lay back a little bit and act like I'm unconscious. Mr. Shellhammer's like, obviously, I've made a huge mistake. Santa Claus is a raving lunatic. Yeah. Chris Kringle is in Bellevue Hospital. I'm not insane, but I've been betrayed. Mr. Gailey happens to be a lawyer. He's like, I'm going to represent you in court. It's a hearing about his sanity. The judge is like, meets up with the prosecutor and the prosecutor's like, this guy's crazy. He thinks he's Santa. That's obviously very cut and dry and black and white inside right here. Don't think too hard about it. And he's like, here comes my pen. I'm going to sign and in that moment, uh, Mr. Gailey comes to the judge's office and says, I want to have a trial. I want to have witnesses. No, I'm going to prove this man is not insane. So they go to trial and the prosecutor is like, I call Santa Claus. No, no. I call Chris Kringle to the stand. And he's like, do you believe yourself to be Santa Claus? Yes, of course. I rest my case. You know, you say you're Santa, the end. It's 1947. The judge is like, I don't want to be the guy who doesn't get elected because of the Santa stuff. Defense attorney, get me out of this shit. Mr. Gailey's like, I call Thomas Mara to the stand. And the prosecutor's like, me? Thomas Mara Jr. And this adorable little boy shows up who's like hi daddy mr gailey says do you believe in santa claus of course i do who taught you that santa claus is real my daddy over there and his dad is so, oh, god damn it fine santa claus exists but you can't prove that that's him right there the hell i can't <laughs> Meantime, Susan is like, I'm gonna write him a letter. Dear Chris, I miss you. By the way, earlier I asked you for a house, like a real live house to live in. And I don't really believe you're gonna get me that, but you better, otherwise I don't believe you're Santa. The end. Cut to the post office. And the one guy's like, hey, check this out. It's a letter to Santa Claus, but it's written for Chris Kringle at the courthouse. What are you, dumb or something? They're putting him on trial over there. Wait a minute. You know how we get like thousands of letters to Santa Claus? And he's like, oh yeah, they just keep coming in and coming in. And they end up in the dead letter office because Santa ain't real. Well, wouldn't it be great if we could deliver those letters? That's a great idea. Hey, that's kind of literally how they do. So back to the trial, a letter comes in for Chris. He's so happy to hear from Susan. The judge is like, listen, I really, really don't want to convict Santa Claus. That's when Mr. Cayley's like, hey, I got it. This letter is from the post office. The post office identified this man as Santa Claus. One letter, get out of here. Well, I have more evidence. They're like, bring it here and you put it on my desk. Okay. And in come a dozen post office workers, each with a giant sack of mail addressed to Santa Claus. And they pour it on the judge's desk. You can't see that he's like, order, order, bang, bang, gavel, gavel, gavel. He is proven in a court of law that that is the one and only Santa Claus. Hooray. However, <laughs> let's fast forward to 1994. Same trial, Dylan McDermott. He's like, forget the post office. How about a dollar bill? And he circles in God we trust and says, wink judge. And the judge is like, you know what? If we can trust in God, we can trust in Santa. Case closed. What? I thought this was a court of law, not clown college. So it's Christmas day. Little Susan's there. She looks under the tree. She's like, what the fuck is this? Where's my house? And Santa's like, I really tried, Susan. Whatever. They're driving home and Susan's like, I'm in the backseat. I'm a kid. I'm disappointed. And then she's like, stop the car. She runs out of the car. This is my house. I gotta go see if there's a swing. Fred and Mrs. Walker walk in and they're clearly in love now. Um, they've smooched. And he's like, well, there is a for sale sign outside. I guess we should buy this house because her kid sort of claimed it. And she's like, yeah, I guess you're right. 
Oh my god, is that a cane? And they see a cane identical to Kris Kringle's. No way! I guess they buy the house and live happily ever after. Okay. End scene. <laughs> 